Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, I love enthusiasm. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Today is Mission Sunday. I get yeah, I think somebody has some enthusiasm there. Oh. It's not the opportunity for you to doze off, but rather <laughs> to remind you of what the church is involved in in terms of mission. What Mission Sunday means isn't that it's only on, on this Sunday that we do mission. By the grace of God, we are supposed to do mission every day and every Sunday. And to that regard, I want to just read you a passage from Ephesians. And this is Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. And it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For, you are, for we are God's worksmanship, created in Christ Jesus to good, to good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. And it's the very last verse that I'm much interested in. It says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And of course, that work is the work of mission. And as a church, of, we are, we've been involved in mission for a very long time, from the very beginning. And... Some of us have been mandated by you, as it were, to continue to do the work on your behalf. And on Mission Sundays, we come here to explain to you exactly what we do as a church in Riley. And in that regard, we're going to play you a small video that shows some of the work that the church is involved in. Jesus said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Since 1818, Rylane Baptist Church have been reaching the world with the love of Jesus Christ through mission support. Here are some of the missions and projects we support. AMBAM, a mission to Papua New Guinea. Rylane has been supporting this mission by providing the community access to safe, clean water, by digging wells in strategic places to alleviate water shortage and to create sustainable solution. Crestos, a mission to Thailand. Ryan Lane has been supporting this mission with their Bible school training program and community development. Nodalisi, a mission to Congo. Ryan Lane has been supporting this mission, an orphanage picking abandoned babies and children from the street caring for them and sending them to school. Angolan Pastors, a mission to Angola. Ryan Lane has been supporting this mission with their pastoral training program, church planting and infrastructure. London City Mission, a mission to London. Ryan Lane has been supporting this mission as they spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in the city of London. Southwark Street Pastors, a mission to Southwark. Rye Lane has been supporting this mission as they reach out through practical love to people on the street that are lost and in need of hope. HICEP, a mission to Somalia. Rye Lane has been supporting this mission as they provide girls' education and empowerment in a society where women suffer gender inequality. Flashy Wings Ministry, a mission to the world. Rye Lane has been supporting this mission as they connect to women from all walks of life across the globe through conferences, therapy, community outreach, and recreational activities. We want to use this opportunity to thank everyone in Rye Lane Chapel for their generosity and care all through the years. The Bible says, The liberal soul shall be made fat, and anyone that waters shall be watered also. This is the Father's promise to you, and so shall it be in Jesus' name. Thank you. Okay, so from that, Amen. Yeah. Well put together. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Actually, Queen should be getting the applause. She put that together, not me. 
And so those are some of the missions that we support. One of the ones that was not mentioned there is, of course, Pecan and also Spinnaker. And as a church, I mean, we don't do it just to big up ourselves, but rather to say that we have done our bit in spreading God's word. But the work doesn't end there. It has to keep going on as long as we exist as a church. And that involves every one of us. It's not just for a few people. It's not for the pastor. It's not for the worship team or the deacons. It's mission. It's everyone's responsibility, as the passage in Ephesians has told us. Also, the other part that we, we didn't mention is, as a church, we have been supporting young children over the, all over the world by sending them regular income for, for their education up to when they are the age of 18. And at the moment, we have two that we are supporting. One is called, uh, the young girl who is called Amara, who is based in Sierra Leone, and she's 12 years old. And we also have a young man that we're supporting in Kenya, who is called Robin, who is nine years old. And what we do is that we support them up to the age of 18. When they, go, when they become adults, we then take up new sets of children. And we've been doing this for over a decade. And if you need more information, obviously speak to Juliet, because she's the one coordinating that. And so as a church, we have been doing a lot, but there's so much more to do, as we are told. The, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. It's actually getting even fewer. So we need more people to join hands with us in trying to spread God's word. But as part of our service this morning, we're going to pray for some of the missions that we've been working with. So I'm going to invite the rest of the team with me, one mission team, to join me in doing this prayer. So Brenda, Chris, Valentine, Queen, and Peggy are all members of the mission team, including Pastor, who's part of the team, and so each one of them is going to have a prayer point that they're going to uh, bring to us, but I just want you to actually see who are the mission team as we are, and if you have any questions, you can ask any of the individuals that are here in terms of how you can be part of the mission team and how you can support us in mission, but right now we're going to go in time of prayer because everything starts with prayer, and so I'm going to pass it on to Peggy first, Brenda. Queen wasn't actually picked because she said she wasn't going to be here, but she is, so thank God for that. <laughs> Chris, and then Valentine. So I'll start with Peggy. Let us pray. Father God, we pray for the street preachers to engage people on the street. Lord, they are, we have a team here that Angela heads up. Lord, we pray for them week by week. Lord, they go into pubs, clubs, late night cafes, and they just meet people who are hurt, lonely, and, and Lord, I pray that they might find healing when they come in contact with the street pastors. Lord, that, that the world is changing and a lot of people live in fear. So I pray that you will protect the teams when they go out. And it's all over London, all over the, our counties. Lord, I pray that for their communities, I pray for a change and breakthrough. Lord, I pray that as the team goes out and they go in air, different areas, they, um, they just will break the bonds that holds pattern in the grips of loneliness and fear of going out and the drugs and, and the fights. Lord, I just pray that you will protect the team and Lord, breakthrough will come. Amen. Lord, we pray for Spinnaker. Lord, Spinnaker goes into, into schools to, to do assemblies and to take a education class, a religion education classes. Lord, I pray that the children will be engaging. Lord, I pray that, um, that they, they will be receptive to your, to, to your call upon their lives. Lord, I pray for the teachers in these schools. I pray for the poor staff. I pray for the parents. Lord, may these children see who you are. May these children see that you are the true and living God. Lord, in, Sad um, in Sadok, they go in, Spenica goes, in, goes in to 17 schools. They, they have visits. They, they, they have made 123 visits. They have done 54 assemblies, and they have done 56 religion education classes. Lord, that children are fearful to go into schools. Since, since COVID, 
children are still afraid to come out. Lord, I pray that if the children don't talk to the, their parents or the teachers, that they can talk to these these volunteers, 55 of them over spectrum, that they can share their fears for the future for them. Lord, I pray that they will see joy when they go into school. Lord, all these fights, knife crime in schools will cease because you are king and Lord of everything. Lord, we just pray for breakthrough for the children that, Lord, that they just will enjoy school. Lord, that they will have fun, they will enjoy, they will learn, become many women after your own heart. Lord, amen. Lastly, the uh, is PCAM. Well, God, we pray for this organization who, who are what, that they do so many different things in just the food bank. They give support for mental health. They do well, well-being classes. They, they do different kind of um, classes for the community who is just across the road by the bus garage. Lord, I pray for them. I pray for that they you help all the individuals who work there. You run classes for people who may not be able to read and write, to help people get into jobs. Lord, again, our world is hurting. People are finding it hard to meet meet ends meet with with um, with food and with and sometimes people feel ashamed to go into a food bank and say I can't cope. Lord, break through this this. Um, this, this kind of shameless because there's nothing to be ashamed of. Lord, we live in hard times. So, Lord, I pray that as we look for the future of these organizations that I pray for, that, Lord, you will have breakthrough in each, each person, each life that's touched, that will know you, that they will find release, they will find peace, and they will find joy because it's only through you that we have these things. And I pray for these things in your precious name. Amen. Uh, we're going to pray for Chris for a session. Well, uh, we thank you for the missionary, Matty, Sarah, Tyler, and we pray for the uh, Bible school students. Uh, many villages, Lord, have asked for the staff and students to visit for fellowship, outreach, teaching, and worship. Unfortunately, this work had to stop temporarily because 20 students and two staff uh, suffered COVID-like symptoms and needed isolation. So I pray, Lord, that you will keep them safe in all this work that they do. We think of the fourth-year uh, students that have been assigned to the various ch uh, village churches. We pray that they will be able to help in the area, bring your word to them, Lord. We also think of the first-year students that have settled in well and are beginning to learn. The mission also has an orphanage, an orphanage for the boys, but they've been coming home lately with uh, homework assignments that are, have been minimal. So we pray, Lord, for the staff wife who is teaching them the Quran la language and for the uh, cook who is teaching them from the Bible, assisted by a third-year student. We pray for all this, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the faithful staff members. And while we're thinking of the mission, Lord, we think of um, Pat and Jeff uh, Atkinson, who were the found Fort Worth and are now retired. And we pray, Lord, that you will keep them safe and with reasonable health, Lord, because we know that Pat's suffering from Alzheimer's and uh, uh, Jeffrey has uh, memory problems as well. We pray for their son, Peter, who has um, converted part of his house to a little flatlet for them to live in. We pray that they you will keep him in strength as he uh, helps his parents in this time. We thank you all, Lord. Amen. Uh, we bring for you now Amban. We hear more about this uh, when Pat comes to uh, here. But Lord, we thank you. We've seen in a video with Amber Ups the water uh, helped the area and the benefit that this brought. 
we pray that this year is more where we're able to be sunk in the word of God to increase his word. We pray for the Bible college students past and pastors as they study and do pastoral work. And we pray for the local community that they will show love and acceptance with one another and in their area. We thank you for these students and education and that they will learn to persevere despite educational challenges. And we pray for the families that are growing in discipleship and learning to uh, word, from the, uh, uh, word of God. And pray for the team that it continues to persevere in all the things of it and well. And we give them all this to you. Father, we thank you for the work that you have done in us. We have been given the eyes of faith, Lord, to make assessments regarding what we have heard. We ask you, Lord, that you would just give us the eyes of faith that we need to know what you want us to know about you and what you want from us. As a church, Lord, we ask you to meet the needs of your church, Lord, Lord, that we don't have to come and pray for our money. There are so many needs in the world. Lord, I pray that you would meet the needs of your church in this church. And Father, I ask you to anoint the finances of this church and those who are giving to it. I ask you, Lord, that there will not be any hidden needs that we don't have to go to you, but that we can do that through your love, your kindness, and through your blood. Sin in our lives. We are full, Lord God, of so many mistakes and problems and issues and things. And through this clutch of wisdom, we can see that you have kept us from sin and that you do love us. And Father, we thank you for this wonderful decision. We thank you for your kindness. You said, I was hungry, you fed me, I was naked, you clothed me. Whatever you do to these, my brethren, you have done unto me. And Lord, through the work of Ryland, we pray you continue to bless this church as well, to be a blessing, Lord, to these orphanages, and also touch our hearts also as individuals, Lord, to, to provide the love and the comfort for every child, not just the one that you've given to us, Lord. And Lord, we want to also pray for HICEP and the work they do in Somalia, Lord. Father, they've been through lots of challenges. And the work they do there is not easy, especially with Al-Shabaab Al and the Islamic State. And it's not easy for them, Lord. But Lord, we pray that you will protect them. We pray that you will bless them. We pray that you will empower them. And their boldness is admirable, Lord. How they are able to, to go into that country to spread your good news. And we are happy to be a part of it, Lord. And Lord, provide for us as well, so we in turn can provide for the needs of the church. We pray this in Jesus' name. Um, I'm going to pray three things. Number one, for Pastor Parika and family. Number two, the new converts, those who baptize newly in Angola, or the ones baptized from the London City Mission, or from Ryland Chapel, those new, those who came into the, the Lord, they should continue, and Lord should strengthen their faith. The third prayer is the building in Angola, the church there, 
the funding of the church that God should provide so that the church, they see the end of the building. So let us pray. Almighty God, the God of Abraham, the God of Elisha, the Father of all nations, you have so many names from all over the world. They call you Jehovah, they call you Jah, they call you Alpha. In other parts of the world, they call you Chineke in Igbo land. In Yoruba land, they call you Olua to show that you are the father of all nations. We thank you, Lord. We ask you, we are begging you, Lord, to protect and guide Father, uh, Pastor Faika and family. Those, he is the one taking challenges in Angola. He, he and his family is facing a lot of difficulties, threats from those who are not Christians. Protect them Protect him and his family, Lord, wherever he goes, wherever they are. Almighty Father, we are also asking you to help those new converts, those who are not Christians or those who are newly converted into Christianity. Strengthen their faith. Let them know that you are the only Savior. You are the king of kings. There's no other God unlike you, Lord. We are also asking you, Lord, the funding, the church that is happening in Angola. Help people to dip into their pockets to provide, to sponsor, no matter how little, even five pounds will provide at least a bag of cement. Ten pounds will do more. Please, Lord, help them. Help the people in Angola. We are here in London or in the United Kingdom. We have church, big church like Riley. We are, we are very comfortable. But those who are outside in third world countries. They don't have anywhere to worship. Provide for them. All this will be in your name, in your glory. All this I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. And I want to thank the team for coming up again. And hopefully, like I said, if you have any questions, you can ask any of us and we'll be able to give you an update. Thank you. Okay. So, moving on. I just want to mention that in future, we'll also be supporting a mission that Sister Jocelyn is involved in, which is a prison ministry where she takes clothes to young men and Bibles as well. And so hopefully we'll be able to give you an update as to how that is ongoing. And of course, Pastor Faika is here with us, and our hope is that next year, some of us will be able to go to Angola with him to actually see the projects that is going on on ground. So we'll be asking for prayers for that. And finally, like Brenda mentioned, Pat and Jeff, who used to be in heads of uh, the Christos ministry, their situation is certainly very desperate. Like we said, Pat has Alzheimer's, and, and uh, Jeff also has issues in the sense that his health is failing because he's also caring for his wife, and they will need our prayers and our support. So in your quiet time, please, if you do, bring them before the Lord for, for healing. Now I'm going to invite Patrick to come and there. Uh, bring us the message, but before then, he's going to tell us about Ambam. And before he starts, I'm going to pray with him and uh, just commit him to the Lord. Our Lord and our God, we want to thank you for the opportunity that we are able to do the work that you sent us to do, Lord. We know that we do this in the honor and glory of your name, not because of man. And so, Father God, we ask that you empower us and strengthen us that we continue to do the work. And we'll bring Patrick before you this morning that as he brings your message to us, and tells us of the work of Ambam, Lord, that we'll be attentive to the message that you're trying to give to us, Lord. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. And before Patrick preaches, he's actually said there are some...
plantain chips from Papua New Guinea at the back. So please don't rush away. Please join us later on for those uh, goodies. Over to you, Patrick. Well, good morning, church. Lovely, lovely to see you all. Are you well? It's, it's, it's good to hear that. Okay, so um, I am going to talk a little bit about AMBAM, which is a, um, a charity that Ryland Chapel supports through the Water World Project in Papua New Guinea, where I come from. So I'm just going to do that, and then I'll go on to the bits where we can uh, look at the, the, the scriptures. So first, if I can have the PowerPoint up, please. Thank you. Okay, great. So this is the, the name um, of the organization. Um, for those of you who don't know, Hambam is a word for mother, big sister in our language. Um, mother or big sister or auntie, that kind of, you know, like in, in, in I don't know about other countries, but in Papua New Guinea, they see a mom, everybody calls her mom. Auntie, everybody calls her auntie. That kind of, so that word, ambam, means all of that. Okay, so country, Papua New Guinea, north of Australia, for those of you who don't know, just will up on the island there. Um, that's where we are. But our location is right bang in the middle of that Papua New Guinea map. We're right there in the middle. Let, let's move on to the next one, please. Okay, so um, my wife, Raquel, and I, and Josh, we were blessed to be our home in our country over the summer, and we were able to visit some of the work there. So that's the center where much of the work takes place from, right in the middle of the village. Um, that building behind is the building that everybody would come and meet for meetings on Sunday. Just uh, mothers would come, children would come. So it's kind of our little center in the village. So we. We, we operate from there and then reach out to the communities in our village. Uh, I was there on that Sunday when we were there. I was able to share with them and encourage them too. Next one, please. I'm going to rush through because there's a little video at the end that I would like you to see more of it. So I'm just going to rush through it. Jacob's World. So that's the world that um, Ryland Chapel initially started and two other worlds, um, the two of them. Uh, sadly, because it's been overused or <laughs> used oftentimes, bits and parts were broken, so it was not working for a while. I managed to shop around on eBay, Amazon, whatever, and found the part that was needed. So when we went, I brought that pump, and then we were able to fix it. So water is back on, pizza, drinking. Praise God for that. Thank you. So next, please. So that's the a well number two. So that well number two, the water is coming, but not as much as the other one, which you will probably see it in the video. But um, as you can see, picture on the right is that's that's everyday life for our children. So children in our side of the world, that's part of their daily chores. Jelly cans, the teapots, to the big polluted water, collect water for your household use, whatever. Um, and that was just next to that well that was broken. And I was so sad that there was a well right there and they were walking sort of 20, 30 minutes to the big river to collect even polluted water. So that's really sad. But that's the situation. We're trying to get it up and running again and hopefully we'll, they'll get more water in there. Um, we have got plans to dig more wells, but the problem with our country is that all these wells are sourced from Australia or New Zealand, somewhere else. So we depend on stock. And sometimes it's not always easy to get the right parts and all of that. But we'll find a way. Moving on to the next, I just want to show a bit of other work we do so you can get a bigger picture of what we do. So that's the, the well is part of our kind of outreach to the community. So this is the other kids there. So while we were there at the kids, it was their normal school day. We were on holidays, they were not. So Josh came and spent some time playing football with them, organized football games. Um, on the left is the school. We have a community school there, Warawagi. Um, our, 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 our leaders there go and do uh, RE lessons. Um, in fact, there's a good story about that girl. 
there was a girl who, who was from our center, but she went to the school. Years later, she went to college to get a um, teaching degree. Now she is back in the same school teaching. And it was a really nice story to sort of follow up with that. And a desire is really, she wants to um, revamp, resurrect the ARI curriculum that has been dormant and dead at the moment. So we're just praying through logistics to get there. Um, yeah, I did other things. I brought my BP with me, because BP um, monitor, <coughs> because I've got high blood pressure. I realized that people walk around the village without knowing that they've got high blood pressure. So that was one thing we did. I spent all day sitting there. People came. I thought I was not a qualified doctor. This, this monitor was just for my own personal use, but I shared it with everybody. And I said, oh, you've got blood pressure a little bit up. You might want to go to check up in the hospital, something like that. Moving on from there. So that's eight Bibles, eight families. That's a little story about the whole tribes made out of eight families. And um, last year, 2022, there was a big a Christmas program where much, many of those families came to faith. So our little charity got involved in trying to disciple those who became, who became Christian. So the Bibles were to sort of to give to the family so that it becomes a remembrance to say, you have made a decision. Now remember, don't wander off. You know, this is, this is where you are. So it's just kind of encouraging them. Um, we were not able to deliver the Bibles at the time, but when we were there, we were able to deliver those Bibles. So all the family came together. Usually things like this you don't do without a meal. So a meal has to be there. So we had a meal and then the distribution of the Bibles. Okay, next. So this is the other group, the women's. Um, this is mainly the single parents, mothers from polygamy, wives and young girls. So um, in our culture, um, girls and mothers are always despised, looked down on. And, um, and if you are a widow or a wife of a, a, a wife who is from a polygamy family, um, your chances of getting through many things are very small. And so that's quite a big ministry. So um, we've got um, Abram and Samantha who I was part of the team of uh, helping these ladies, um, um, and we're, we're trying to help them um, at the moment uh, in sort of practical ways so that um, if, if they can um, be able to um, grow more vegetables or raise up one or two more pigs, that will help them to sort of help themselves rather than just, oh, what can I do? The land is very big. Um, if you don't have land, it's going to be tough. So that's it. So. Moving on to the next one, I'm just going to rush this quickly. So these are the Bible college students. We realized that this sort of work, you know, it, it, we need to have good leaders. Um, sometimes we do stuff and then we feel like we are, like, you know, I was mentioning earlier on. Um, so we realized that we need leaders. So one of the things we uh, sacrifice a lot of other things to do is to put people to Bible college and get some training and at least some good knowledge of the Bible and the scriptures and to be able to um, serve in the community. And we, three families have um, felt a call to do that, so we support them in two different Bible colleges, um, including Abram and Samantha, who are also our students, and Sam and Dan in the families. Then we've got two pastors who, have, who are serving in the community. Um, they, they serve in two different churches, but because the ambam um, is in the, in the center um, and in the, in the, in the community, um, they see the value of supporting what we do. Um, so um, everybody is reached one way or the other. Okay, so that's Pastor John Murphy and Joe Walter. Um, next one, please. Yeah, so, and then this is the other thing. So, you know, when we work, I always think about children and the story of um, Sharon, the teacher. Um, so Sharon is actually there on the, one of the photos there. Um, these are sort of students we, we, we help them. Uh, grades 1 to 12 is free education, but college and universities is where the money is needed to pay for school fees. So some of these kids um, are needing money to go to um, universities or college because of, uh, couldn't go because of school fees. 
Um, we walk and we put money for uh, sort of insurance or things like that for, for future. Most people in the village would see these children as investing as their insurance policy. Some of you would know that. It means when you are at the age where you can't work, one day these children, in the hope that they will get a job and they will pay for your hospital bills. That's how it works. So it's very important to ch send children to school. Uh, even the education system is, system is really, really rubbish, but we hope that the ones and the twos will make it. And whoever makes it, they becomes the pride of not their family, but the whole tribe, or the whole community. That's, that's how it works. So big, big, big investment on kids for education. Anyway, moving on. Is there, okay, so prayer points. And then I, th I think you can, you can get the prayer points later. I've, I've written all of this in a little prayer left at the back. So if you want to read more, just grab, grab that. But I'm going to go to the next one, which is a video. I'd like you to see that. If that's okay, if that's going to work. the one originally sing these wells and um, I, he went to another province but I found him and then I um, called him so he came to uh, fix the well and uh, now we've got running water. now enjoying the water. No. Frank has done a good job. Children are playing football.
So as you can see, it's not professionally done, but <laughs> lots of mistakes there. But anyway, at least you get a glimpse or a taste of what's, what that ministry is about. Um, yeah. I know you've been sitting for a little while, so if you want to stretch yourself a little bit and grab yourself a Bible, and um, we will turn to uh, Matthew chapter 24, if that's okay. So let's, let's do that. I'm going to read from verses 1 to 14. Matthew 24, 1 to 14. Are we all good? Great. Let me read. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things? He asked. I tell you the truth. Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the hand of the age? Jesus answered, what's out that no one deceives you? For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the hand is still to come. Nations will rise against nation, and the kingdoms again against kingdoms. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be aided by whole nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the hand will be saved. He who stands firm. Verse 14, and this is the bit that I want you to focus on today. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the hand will come. Let's pray. Our Father, we come before you this morning, and we want to thank you for giving this church a vision to do missions in Raylane, in UK, and the rest of the world. The songs we've been singing this morning reflects a God of creation, a God who was interested in creation and cre created a creation that wanted them to worship him. Sadly, that good creation was broken. Today, we live in a broken world. But that's not the end of the story. God, you are at work to recreate creation. Thank you, Jesus, this morning as we read through these verses. May you, Holy Spirit help us and guide us to understand a bit of what you are doing and a bit of your heartbeat and our response to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus has been ministering outside of Jerusalem for most of his time. In his last weeks on earth, he comes to Jerusalem to complete his mission as prophesied. That he is to die on the cross for the sins of the world. In the narrative, a very engaging conversation takes place between Jesus and his disciples at the Mount of Olives outside Jerusalem. About the temple and Jesus' prophecy concerning the destructions of it. Jesus' prophetic statement about the destruction of the temple provokes the disciples to ask further questions about the end times. 
particularly Jesus' second coming, the end of the age, and the signs to look out for, verses 2 and 3. In response, Jesus gives a prophecy about the end times and the events and his second coming. He talks about difficult times, the rise of false teachers seeking to deceive many believers. Nations will be at war with each other. Global disaster, famine, pestilence, and earthquakes. These are the beginning of the trouble and difficult times. And I'm sure we have seen enough to see so much is going on in the world. Many believers will be tested for their faith and be killed. Yes, we get stories from this from places who are restricted to the gospel. China, Korea. Amongst the believing community, many will be offended and betray one another and hate one another. I pray that this will not happen in Riley. We will stay together. Amen, church? We will be strong together. Amen? Many false prophets will rise to deceive many. Yes, there is so many out there. There is so many false prophets. And because of the amount of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But our heart for the Lord, our love for the Lord will not grow cold, but it will increase. It will intensify. It will be on fire. Amen. On fire. The whole chapter talks about the events of the end times. And a lot of this is prophetically speaking. That means Jesus was referring to future events. Can you imagine? 2,000 years ago, almost 3,000 years ago, Jesus was saying this to a future event. I wonder what that future event is. There are, diff- there are different views concerning the hand times. And surely I will not be making any attempt to talk about that. But I will be focusing on verses 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached um, in the whole world as a testimony or witnesses in some translation. And then the hand shall come. So, my first point here is um, the gospel of the kingdom. The term gospel is is often amongst our Christians, uh, amongst us. We use the word a lot. Gospel witness, gospel music. Come on, help me here. Gospel choir. Gospel what? Gospel testimony. Come on now, yeah? We use this a lot. But what does it really mean? I know pastor has been speaking a lot about the gospel here from the pulpit. But what does it really mean? I, I, I did a little bit of reading, so you know, I must admit from the start, I am not a Greek scholar, but I've been reading the dictionaries. The, word, the Greek word for the, the word gospel is evangelio, and it means good tidings or good news. The gospel is good news about the kingdom of God and about Jesus. What does this good news look like? Michael Hogan, I read a book about him, and he was trying to describe what this good news is. And this is what he says. The good news is a message about the fullest revelation and the final accomplishment of the hand of the universal history. The comprehensive restoration of all creation and the whole of human life in the kingdom of God. Present and coming in coming in history in Jesus Christ and by the Spirit's power. Well, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Well, let let me, in other words, I'll, I'll just summarize it for you. The good news is the timeless message about God's rescue plan for his broken creation through the person of Jesus Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To fully understand and appreciate the goodness, we must first consider the what? Bad news. The bad news. In order for us to understand the goodness, we must understand the bad news. So what is the bad news? The bad news is that God's good creation project of Genesis 1 and 2 was ruined by Adam and Eve. They deliberately disobeyed God's clear instruction and listened to Satan's lies by hitting from the fruit the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Do not eat from the tree of life, and if you do, you will die. Genesis 3.3. 3. 
The Bible calls this disobedience sin. Sin is things we think we do and say that dishonors God's required standard. Sadly, Adam and Eve's sin not only affected them, but all of humanity and creation. It means us. In Romans uh, 5 and verse 12, the Apostle Paul confirms this inherited sin and says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way, death came to all people, because all sin. I want you to make note of the word all, A-L-L, all. This means no matter how good we seek to be, they are sinners. we are sinners by default. We inherited sin. And the judgment for sinners is what? Amen. We all know this stuff. Paul again con confirms the consequence of sinning that leads to death. The wages of sin is death. Romans 3, 6.23, the first bit. Now, Adam and Eve did not die physically at the time when they sinned, but they were, sep they, they were separated from God. You know, separation is a form of death. Genesis 3.24, So the Lord banished him from the Garden of Eden to walk the ground for which he had been taken. As you can see, sin and all sinners are subject to God's judgment. God will judge sin. But God loves the what? Sinner. And the, the wages for sin is death. And the truth is, no one can save themselves. You see, this is the sad bit. We can never save ourselves. Never. No matter how good we are. You know, I think it's as I was just said, all our good works result to filthy wrecks. So, there's absolutely no way we can save ourselves. We need saving. We need a savior. Sadly, right now, people are dying and stepping into a Christless eternity. I wonder what does that make God's heart feel? As we speak now, people are dying in the world. That's a fact. And some of these people are not Christians. And surely they will go to hell. I'm, 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 sad. I'm sad to say that, but it is what it is. This is the bad news. We can't save ourselves. Sinners will be judged. There will be a judgment day. This is where I said that's not the end of the story. We have good news. And the good news, as we all know, and most of you will probably know this already, I'm probably speaking to the converted here, but it's just a way of reminding ourselves. Um, what is the good news? You see, since the day sin, God's good creation, came under ruin, God has been at work. God has been at work. And he is still at work today. Someday, one day, that that creation project, that creation that God created, will all come together perfectly. But for now, God is in that process of bringing renewal and revival and restoration. And that's why we are part of it. We are part of it. In Genesis 3, 21, one Adam and Eve sinned. What happened? They were, they were naked. They were embarrassed. They felt vulnerable. In the, in the time of need and vulnerability, God stopped him. They couldn't help themselves. God stopped him. An innocent animal has to be slaughtered and killed. And their skin, its skin was taken to cover the guilt and shame of Adam and Eve. That is significant. And that is God in his best of his grace. In, and so throughout, throughout biblical history, we read um, God intervening in people's lives and rescue them. Um, Genesis 9, Noah and the, and the heart um, and, and the flood story. How sin has corrupted everybody and God had to sadly destroy that generation of people except Noah and his family. 
the rainbow becomes a symbol that God will never destroy his people again. The rainbow. In Genesis 12, God called and promised Abram. He had to call him out from his own family, his tribe, to a land that he is going to show. And through that genealogy of Abram comes Jesus the Messiah. There's a lot in there. Uh, read, read Matthew 1.1 1, 1, and the first, very first verse, it gives you the genealogy um, of uh, Jesus that traces back to, to, to Abram. 42 generations. Um, amazing, amazing how God works. In Luke 2 verses 10, listen to what the angel said to the faithful shepherds at the birth of Jesus. This is about God and the good news. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for the whole, for all the people. That's that word all again. John 1 and verses 29. Here's what John the Baptist, the forerunner, had to say about Jesus when he meets Jesus for the first time face to face. And this is what he says. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And listen to what Jesus says about himself at the temple in Nazareth when he was quoting from the scroll of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel of goodness to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the freedom for the prisoners and the recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the year of jubilee. Amen. We have good news, my brothers and sisters. The year of Jubilee. I, I read a little bit about this year of Jubilee. It's again a sort of a historical event. Um, and I think it's, well not I think, but it is celebrated uh, uh, even in this day and age. Um, it is uh, here that talks about um, the 50 years of how slaves would have been set free. So when the slave masters would no longer have ownership over their slaves they would be set free and returned back. And this is kind of a significant in the way that we have been under, uh, Israel has been under the slavery of sin and, and of, of different powers. I mean, bless Israel, they've come to a lot. They've been through all the different Babylonian powers and the Assyrian powers and the Roman powers, but God always looks after them. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preach to you. Um, this is uh, Paul, what Paul the Apostle had to say about the gospel. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance. Now, this is the bit that I want to hear very carefully. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried. That he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Christ has come. Christ has died. Christ will. Amen. The good news is that at the cross, Christ took all our sins past, present, and future. And nailed them on that cross. That cross, my brothers and sisters, it's not a souvenir around our necks. It is powerful. It is the most powerful symbol in the entire globe. We have a message because of that cross. The message of the cross is what? Foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved. It is the power of God unto salvation, brothers and sisters. That cross is our hope. That cross is our hope. Because of the cross, we have a message. The good news is that in his burial, Christ put to rest the old sinful nature. In his burial, Jesus' burial, he put to death and rest the whole nature of sin. And he had, I think there was a line here, your songs were very, very great this morning, well picked. It gives you a, about the whole creation and about you know, I was like, as I was, I think it's one of the new songs about creation that Phil was uh, trying to learn, uh, ask, ask us to learn. I was, I was imagining God at work, creation and where we are coming through. 
and then all this will happen. And Jesus and, and, uh, and us reaching the world with the gospel and all of this coming to an end. The good news is that in his resurrection, Jesus rose to life. Jesus rose to life. And overcoming the power of sin and death, the last enemy. Death has lost its grief, and the author and the giver of life has total control over death. He has set the example for us. Brothers and sisters, this is what I want to say. You know, we can rejoice in death. Death is not the end. It's the beginning of a new life. It's the beginning of a new life. Amen. We must not suffer as the world. Although we will, you know, we will miss our loved ones. We will miss our close friends. We will not see them for a time. But that is not the end. We will have hope to see them again. Amen. In Christ. The good news is that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Listen, I want to, I want to appeal to you. If you are here in this room or if you are online watching this, you know, if we, if, if we need to get to God's heaven, the only way is through the cross, through Jesus. There is no other way. There is no other way. Um, so, um, we all know the famous verse, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his... Ever believes shall not but Everlasting life, my brothers and sisters. Everlasting life. You're not going on a holiday to heaven and back. It's everlasting forever and ever and ever. Ever. Come on. This is the gospel. This is the good news. I must move on. Our time is going. I'm really holding up right here. But look, let me, number two. Um, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world. As a witness. A lot to be said in this bit as well. Will be preached. Irrespective of what's going on. This gospel will be preached. In the whole world. As a witness. To all nations. And then the hand will come. Think about this. Someday, someone came to you and shared the gospel. That's why you're here today. That's why I'm here today. I can tell you my story. I won't. But think about that. Someone made an, a willful attempt to come and speak to you and talk to you about Jesus, about the goodness. And as a result of that, you and I, Claim, or we call ourselves Christians or Christ followers. And beside God's divine grace, on a human level, somebody, someone came to you that many years ago or recently. I don't know when it happened for you, but somebody did. Someone came to you. Why should we, why should we hear the gospel and keep it to ourselves? I am a parent. Um, when my son Josh was growing up, uh, he was very quite. He was quite active, and there were certain places that I would watch him, and I would never take my eyes off him, because the minute I did, I could imagine all manner of things going wrong. I make sure that you know, I would watch him. So when he is going to places that poses or threats a danger, I would never. Stand there quietly and just, oh, Josh, come on, child. Don't go there. I wouldn't do that. I would say, Josh, don't, stop, stop, don't. I don't know. It's just me or maybe some of your parents would relate to that. We would reach out for our loved one, wouldn't we? Listen, I want to put the same challenge to all of us here. There are people who are walking without Christ and walking into a Christless eternity. And some of these people are within our neighbors, within our accessibility. And you probably may be the only person, Christian, that may be able to 
have access to telling that news. I'll leave it out there for you today to, to think about that. Imagine if that person dies and you know fully well that you had this opportunity but never. Why must we? God doesn't want anyone to perish in hell. Never. He, he loves all of us. And why should we preach the gospel? If we don't preach the gospel, you see, here's the alternative. Satan is preaching an alternative gospel. And can I tell you what this alternative gospel looks like? People believe in all kinds of ideas and philosophies about God. Atheism teaches people to believe a lie that there is no God. Atheism. Religious pluralism teaches a lie that all religions lead to the one and same God. A lie. Religious relativism teaches a lie that there is no absolute truth. Jesus is not the only way to God. That's what Satan is, is teaching. Alternative gospel. He is not one of the many. Agnostics have stopped following any gods and question their existence. Take your pick. Believe what you like. Be what you want to be. Alternative gospel. Why should we bother? Because the world needs it. The world needs it. Whose job is it? Verses very, very clearly tell us. If we read Acts 1, 8, uh, Matthew 28, um, we, we are the generation to take this gospel to the world. I'm going to finish up here. But let me just point out to some last points here that I was going to share, which is um, verses um, in the last verse. Um, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the hand will come. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is coming back. He is coming back. No one will stop him. No man, no woman, no power, no authority, no kingdom. No rulers, no, no one will stop Jesus from coming back. He is coming back. That's a definite. He is coming back. It's a rejoicing that. Oh, it just excites me um, to know that Jesus is coming back. No matter what you are going through, family-wise, spiritual-wise, we have an eternal security that Jesus is coming. When he comes back the second time, it's not to deal with sin anymore. It's coming back to take us home. It's coming to take us home. Praise God. We live in a day when there's so much going on, but we must take comfort that Jesus is coming. He came at Christmas. He comes to us today, but he will come again. In the future, Jesus is coming. Today is the day, it's the grace period day, when we have the opportunity to tell our friends about the gospel. The gospel needs to go. Jesus will come, but somehow, you know, that, that, that word there, and then the end will come. That word then. Jesus is ready, you know, he's ready to come, but some of us are not ready yet. The world is not ready yet. And then the end will come. Maybe I'm not saying, but I'm saying. We are delaying Jesus' coming. I don't know. Um, lots, lots to think about. I will, so what's the takeaway today? What's the takeaway today? Um, the takeaway is um, uh, it's in Matthew 22, 37 to 40. Um, that's, that's the verse about loving God and loving our neighbors. That's the takeaway for us today. If we truly say we love our neighbors, we will do what the Lord wants us to do. We will command and obey. We will obey the Lord's commands. And one of the Lord's commands or one of the Lord's desire is he wants all, all to be saved. And he has given us that responsibility to do it.
Um, yes, um, there was a quote that I wanted to um, share with us. Let me see if I find here. Um, yeah, there, there's a quote from John Wesley. Um, Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. John Wesley. I thought that was a nice quote to go away with this. Listen, um, the challenge is, if it's not now, then when? If it's not here, then where? If it's not you, then who? We're just going to stop here and pray. Let's pray. Our Father, I want to thank you for today and for those thoughts that you have um, spoken through me. And I, Lord, I just put myself in there as well. I am not saying that I've got all of this right, but all of us here this morning as a church. Father, as we go home today, um, I pray that you would help to put either one person or two or three people in our mind to pray, to pray for their salvation. And not only to pray, but Lord, I pray that you will help us to be willfully, willing, willing to go and talk to them and befriend them, or whatever it might look like, but with the intention to share the gospel. We will love them enough to tell them the truth that Jesus wants to save them. They need to save them if they haven't. So, Father, I pray for each and every one of you, my brothers and sisters, as we come to the end of this day and this, this meeting, that we could go out firing, that we have heard the good news, we have got, um, uh, we've got that message to bring to the world around us. Help us not to shy away, but help us to continue to be bold for you and be able to share those messages in Jesus' name. Amen.